Yo guys, welcome to our channel today again. The channel is Nazbin, and kindly if you have not subscribed to our channel, I uh, want to encourage you to subscribe because that's the best way in which you can always uh, promote us and also uh, our channel to get recommended by YouTube uh, to reach uh, larger population. Here we get to discuss matters sensitive and but very vital where no other channel gets to discuss matters as this. So guys, Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, how uh, something hygiene. We are going to talk about how to wash your vagina. That's what we are going to talk about. How to wash your vagina is uh, our topic for today. And when we talk about proper uh, hygiene, that is very essential for maintaining uh, health and also preventing infection. And uh, I'm going to give you a guide on how you are supposed to uh, wash uh, with not only washing, but how you are you're supposed to be safe with your uh, washing your vagina safely. Very key. Uh, generally, when we talk about uh, the vagina, we talk about uh, it has some features which we must always put in place. Number one, uh, the area uh, uh, in the vagina is uh, has some conditions. Uh, which are, must be maintained. And we have the normal bacteria which live there. So we must always protect them so that they may we may not get uh, infections at the end of the day. So on understanding the anatomy of the vagina, vagina is very, it's very key. I get to state that it's self-cleaning. And also because the other vulva requires uh, cleaning, that's the other the outer part of uh, the vagina, what you call the vulva, is the one which requires cleaning. But the vagina, what you call the vagina, what normally we call the vagina, is self-cleaning, uh, cleansing. So when we talk about the the, the vagina, uh, uh, so we don't wash the internal vaginal canal. So so that is what uh, we must always understand. Number two point, which is very key, is the use of mild. Uh, use of mild scented soaps or unscented soaps. So action of this is that uh, because you must choose a mild and scented soap or a feminine or, or a feminine uh, uh, wash, hygiene wash, we it's specifically designed for external genitalia area. So the reason for this why you should go for mild and unscented soaps is because we want to avoid any irritation and also maintain the natural the natural pH. Uh, pH. When we talk about pH, we talk about how something is either acidic or is alkaline. So we want to maintain that level of pH for that. For that, so that uh, that's why we want to use that mild and scented soaps. Wash the external area only. And when we talk about washing the external only, that is the point also very key point. You have I've talked about you get to clean the vulva. That is the external part of the genitals, gently with your fingers or a soft cloth. So the, well, the vulva part of it is the one which should be cleaned. And the method of this is you, you be gentle with your fingers or a soft uh, cloth for that which is clean. Also very key, the, 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 why you should uh, do this for washing the external area only, the internal vagina should not be washed with soap as it is disrupt the natural uh, bacteria, uh, especially the bacteria we call lactobacilli. If you get to wash it in with that uh, and you are very aggressive on it, you get to predispose yourself to bacterial infection and also some other yeast infection. Uh, avoid douching. Douching, yeah, you avoid this. Do, no, you, do not use uh, vaginal sprays. Some people recommend uh, you've seen some videos online about people doing uh, dodging and also vaginal sprays. Kindly I, I, I avoid dodging. Why? This they disrupt the natural balance of bacteria and yeast, leading to very serious uh, yeast infections. So that is very key. So you avoid dodging and also using those uh, the, the, the dodges and also the vaginal sprays, which can predispose you to bacterial and also yeast infection. Number another po key point is about rinse thoroughly. When we talk about rinsing thoroughly, we mean rinse the external genitalia area through with warm water. 
The reason for this is to ensure that all soap or a cleanser is removed to prevent the irritation at the end of the day. So it's very key that you get to wash or rinse thoroughly so that you get to rinse the external genitalia with warm water. This one ensures all soap and also the cleanser which you've used for other part of the body is uh, removed thoroughly from the body. Pat dry gently. Use clean and also soft towel to pat area dry. After washing, we, need, we want to make that area to remain very uh, dry as much as possible. This one ensures that all the uh, soap or the cleanser used is removed to prevent any further irritations because of the content of those uh, uh, cleansers we use or the soaps we use to clean ourselves. Very key also after you've washed, it's very key that you wear breathable fabrics. Breathable fabrics, the recommend of cotton wearing underwear is very is very reasonable. So choose cotton underwears and avoid tight clothing. That's very key for your taking care of your of your health down there. So the cotton allows the area to breathe and reduce the moisture buildup because we don't want that area to have a lot of moisture so that uh, this one, if you build up the moisture thing about it, you get that the bacteria get to grow there all the, and you are predisposed to a lot of uh, infections and also other discomforts. Number, another very key point is about avoiding scented uh, products. Avoid use, uh, using, uh, we've seen things like uh, uh, the ladies' products, like uh, the parts which they use for the menstrual cycle. Uh, nowadays, we have brands which are scented. Uh, so we avoid using scents, uh, scented uh, parts. Uh, at some point, we also don't recommend tampons or feminine hygiene products, which are scented. The reason for scented product, products, they can get to, because of the content, they con the things they contain, it can really irritate the skin because and also disrupt the delicate uh, skin and also disrupt the natural vaginal flora so that you get now after when we disturb the normal flora for for this we get that we get we predispose ourselves uh, to uh, various infections it's also very key is to practice safe sex use protection during the sexual activity to ensure proper uh, also very proper hygiene to be uh, taken care of and when we talk about this uh, we want also to uh, use to be very safe and also to practice hygiene before and after the intercourse part of it. So when you maintain your hygiene, you don't do it for even your partner, you do it for your also your health. So before and after, make sure you maintain high levels of hygiene for that vaginal area. The reason for this is to reduce the risk for sexually transmitted infections and also maintain the vaginal health as, at the end of the day. Very key also, ladies and gentlemen, consult your healthcare provider. If you experience unusual symptoms, like you are itching in your vaginal area, burning or an unusual discharge, you, it is very key that you get to consult your healthcare provider. So don't shy away from this. Go and seek your, if it is your gynecologist, if it is your general practitioner, if it is your doctor, uh, if it is your uh, reproductive health in us, go and see that person so that you get they get to understand what is happening and also do early diagnosis and also initiate early treatment so that you get to manage the infections of, uh, or if there is another other health issues to be approached, they can be handled at that particular point. So how do you manage uh, your vaginal health is very key. The effect management of vaginal health and also involves maintaining proper hygiene. That's very key. That's what we talked about, addressing any symptoms promptly and also seeking medical care when very necessary. That's very key, guys. So the key strategies for maintaining or managing your vaginal health is very key. Number one uh, way of, man of uh, strategy for managing your vaginal health is routine uh, uh, hygiene practices. And when you talk about uh, routine, uh, 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 practice, routine hygiene practices, we're talking about follow up with your proper washing techniques. Like I've mentioned, use mild and scented soaps and also uh, uh, only do this cleaning on the external vulva and also avoid internal washing or douching, like I've mentioned. This way, 
we prevent the irritation and maintain the natural pH of the vaginal area. Regular gynecological checkups, regular gynecological checkups is very key for your vaginal health. This, uh, this is done by scheduling your regular visits to your gynecologist. Gynecologists, the one who deals with the conditions of, lady, of women or ladies. So ladies, it's very key that you get to check up, get regular checkups with your gynecologist so that they can do routine exams. They can examine you and also do screening as much as possible to help you. Also, with this, we have, this one can help one do early detection of an issue such as the infections and also abdominal discharge or other conditions which can come about it. Monitor and address symptoms. The, uh, that is very key also. Where you do this by paying attention to your unusual symptoms like itching, burning, unusual discharge or odor, and seek medical advice if they persist. So you should be very uh, sensitive about any changes in your body, things like itching, burning, unusual discharge, or odor and see uh, that odor is bad smell or change of smell so that you seek medical advice if you are not sure what is really happening now another very key point is about uh, use of appropriate products that's a way of also managing your vaginal health choose unscented hypoallergenic uh, menstrual products uh, and avoid products with potential risks like i've said about scented parts presented tampons and other products which you get to insert to your vagina, especially the douching products also, this can lead to a lot of problems. So this, by avoiding this, by using the appropriate products for your vaginal health and hygiene, you reduce the risk of irritation and also allergic reactions which can come about from these kind of problems. Safe sex practices is very key also, where we recommend the use of condoms or other forms of protection to reduce the risk of sexually transmitted infections or the STIs. This, by th doing this, it protects against infections and it maintains the overall vaginal health. Health lifestyle, very key guys. By this, you will get to maintain a balanced diet, stay hydrated, and also regular uh, exercise is very key because we want to do this to support your overall health. And when you support your overall health, you also that includes vaginal health and it helps in the prevention of infections. Avoiding irritants. Avoiding irritants is a way also of taking care of your vaginal health. By avoiding uh, use of perfumed uh, soaps, sprays, and also powder in the vaginal area. So this prevents irritation and also disruption of natural uh, flora of the of the vagina educate yourself uh, get to watch videos as from this nasvin channel uh, also and other reliable sources so that you get to know what really is happening and what you should do about vaginal health and hygiene so this helps to make you informed decisions about personal health and also health management at the end of the day address infections promptly i've mentioned so that you get to stay informed about their vaginal health and, the, and, and, and their practices. So if you suspect any infection, seek medical treatment promptly to address uh, it effectively, so as much as, uh, as possible, so that you get uh, to uh, prevent the infection from worsening and also they reduce the risk of uh, complications. So by doing this, you get to manage it very well so that you get don't get the infections to... Uh, uh, to get to a level where you can't control them and also they may bring other complications. So manage stress is also a very key point. How is it related to your vaginal health? So when you engage in stress reducing activities and practices, it supports your overall body or well-being, which can uh, positively also impact your vaginal health at the end of the day. So proper management and also vaginal uh, hygiene or health it involves maintaining good hygiene, monitoring the symptoms, using appropriate products, products practicing uh, safe sex, and uh, seeking regular medical care is very key. So by following these practices, you can help prevent infections, address any issues promptly, and maintain the well uh, overall uh, vaginal health and also well-being of your body.
Sometimes we have complications of poor vaginal health management. So neglecting proper vaginal management can lead to several serious complications. Number one is about infections. So with the infections, we, with the poor hygiene, douching or use of irritants products can lead to bacterial vaginosis, yeast infections, or sexually transmitted infections. So the impact of this is that the symptoms, uh, they include the itching, burning, and usual discharge, odor, and treated infections can cause also significant discomfort and they require more intensive uh, treatment. Chronic vaginal discomfort. Chronic vaginal discomfort is also another uh, complications which can come about when we have persistent irritation or sensitivity due to proper improper hygiene and uh, irritants. They are going to discomfort, itching, or pain, affecting the quality of life and also potentially leading to more severe conditions. Risk of uh, STIs is also another complication because of inconsistent use of uh, protection during sexual activity or poor hygiene can increase the risk of STIs. STIs can have serious consequences, including what you call pelvic, pelvic inflammatory disease or PID and long term uh, reproductive issues, including infertility. When we talk about pelvic inflammatory disease, we're talking about when you have a lot of untreated infections can lead to productive organs, really, uh, uh, can affect this uh, reproductive organ and spread through it, leading to what we call pelvic inflammatory disease. This, chronic pain, this can cause chronic pain, infertility, and an increased risk for, increased risk for uh, what we call ectopic pregnancy. Complications of hormonal, uh, homo, of hormonal imbalances can also come up because of hormonal changes or imbalances can lead to issues such as vaginal dryness, discomfort, and also risk for infections. This may require treatment to manage the symptoms and also underlying other underlying conditions. Vulvar disorders, chronic irritation or infection can lead to such uh, things as what we call vulvodynia, also, also vulva uh, dermatitis. So this can cause a persistent pain, discomfort of the vulva area, affecting daily activities and also sexual health. In increased risk for reproductive health issues. When we talk about uh, increased risk uh, of uh, reproductive issues, we're talking about poor management of vaginal health can contribute uh, to reproductive health and also problems, including the infertility part of it. This may require specialized treatment and management of the underlying issues as much uh, as much as possible. So also psychological impact. So pers persistent vaginal health issues can lead to anxiety, stress, and also depression. This affects the overall well-being and also the quality of life at the end of the day. So this, can, this one can lead to discomfort, pain, and also need for medical treatment to manage this, the, the condition. And this one can affect the mental well-being and the quality of life, potentially impacting the relationships and also the daily functioning, the normal functioning of a, a human being. Skin conditions, we have exposure to irritants or allergens can cause skin irritations, cause things like rashes, dermatitis, and also in the vaginal area. This can lead to discomfort, pain, and need of medical treatment to manage the skin conditions at the end of the day. Complications of incorrect use of products. They, we, they, we have things like uh, irritant products, uh, like, like uh, scented tampons or douches, like I mentioned, can exacerbate the issues. This increase the, they increase the level of uh, irritation and also uh, can lead to things like potential long-term complications at the end of the day. So when you look at the preventing these uh, complications, is very key. So how you are supposed to do or what you're supposed to do to prevent these uh, complications is very key how you get to approach it, guys. So number one is about uh, adopt proper hygiene. Use mild and scented products. You choose gentle and scented soaps for washing external yes. interior to avoid the irritation. Avoid douching. Do not use douches or internal cleansers as they can disrupt the natural vaginal flora. Uh, also wear breathable fabrics. I mentioned about the cotton. Uh, opt for cotton underwear and avoid tight clothing to avoid or to prevent moisture buildup and also irritation. Maintain healthy diet and also lifestyle. So that's very key. By this, you do a balanced diet, incorporate fruits, what we call vegetables, or grains, and lean proteins to support the overall health. Stay hydrated, drink plenty of water to support uh, bodily functions, 
and also maintain healthy skin and also mucous uh, membrane. By exercising regularly, you get to engage in the activity which support the overall health of the body, and also by this, you also get to boost your immune function. Avoid uh, uh, allergens, choose unscented menstrual products, I've mentioned about it. Uh, avoid uh, allergens also, manage stress is very key. Educate yourself so that you get your st you stay informed, learn about the vaginal health and hygiene practices through reliable and also uh, sources. This one uh, get, makes you aware to learn on uh, uh, any abnormal or you get to get the latest, so now you're supposed to manage each condition as it comes or gets you to learn on how to, to find out if there's anything abnormal about your vaginal health. Consulting your healthcare provider for proper, uh, to provide uh, issue or to provide solutions for your issues. Like if you are experiencing itching, you are experiencing burning, an issue of discharge or persistent discomfort, it's very good that you get to consult your healthcare provider to help you to come up with the uh, solutions by doing the evaluation and also giving you the proper treatment at the end of the day. So maintaining your vaginal health, vaginal health is very crucial for overall well-being. So it involves a combination of proper hygiene, lifestyle choices, and productive, proactive uh, medical care. So the key strategies employed in this is adopting uh, proper hygiene practices, maintaining health lifestyle, practicing the safe sex, avoiding irritants, regular gynecological checkups, and also managing stress. By uh, following these preventive measures and seeking medical advice when, ne when necessary, individuals can maintain the optimal vaginal health and address issues early and also improve overall quality of life. Guys, welcome. The channel is Nazvin. Kindly if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like the video. By liking the video, you get YouTube to recommend us to a larger population so, so that uh, issues, uh, health, issues as simple as uh, vaginal health can really be discussed here. And you, need to, you don't need to understand the medical jargon to know what we discuss in this channel. Guys, welcome. And also I want to encourage you to welcome to our next video. Welcome, guys.